Hey everyone, my name is King Rico. Today I'm going to talk about the racing bar chart visualization that I made for PGC Pokemon usage uh, regulations A through G. Uh, I'm going to talk about the tool that I used. I'm going to talk about how I gather all the data. And at the end, I'm going to talk about a little bit about actual VGC and what that means. Um, so pretty much just get started to talk about the tool. The tool is called uh, Flourish. Uh, you go to the site, um, the Flourish Studio Visualization, whatever, uh, and you're gonna get to to site you're gonna be able to create basically um what they call stories i think like if you go in here you're gonna see that you can there's some like base projects they give you uh you do have to make an account to use this but it you know whatever i feel like you need to make an account for like everything these days but um what we're gonna do is you can go on the data and this is how it's all organized uh you have the very first data components uh, which for us would be Pokemon. Um, then uh, for the second row, you can uh, do something called categories here over on, on the right. Uh, and uh, this basically just gives a different color to all the different categories. So it's just a purely visual thing. Uh, what I did is I categorized the Pokemon by the regulations uh, when they first were legal uh, in the game. So it feels like it's kind of easy to see uh, when certain Pokemon appear in the meta. And then um, you can add images uh, to every single data point. Uh, so that's really nice. I was able to get all the default sprite uh, images from Limitless uh, VGC. Uh, so that's what all this is. And then after that, it's just your actual data points. And in this case, um, I have all the tournament data uh, uh, for all of the official VGC tournaments that have happened, uh, starting with Regulation A. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have them labeled here, but if you want to add an extra caption, for example, to actually show what changes over time, you can go in this caption section. And here uh, you can have a column that tells you when the label is going to appear, uh, then you're going to have a label, uh, sorry, you're going to have a row that's going to have the time when it's going to disappear. And then in the last column is going to be the actual like that's gonna appear during that time so as you can see during all these times i just have specific uh time periods for each of the regulation and when the whole animation plays you get to see every single one so you don't have to memorize uh when different like regionals happen or whatever like you just look at this label and it's really nice so that's kind of it for the data um i'm gonna talk about how i gathered in a second but when you um actually get to like put it all together you're going to be using this menu on the right quite a lot and here you can pick a theme and give it no theme and you look at that and it's like i don't know i didn't really like it you can give it this apex theme uh my favorite one was midnight i'm a programmer i love dark mode so of course i picked that and as you can see as everything is moving along over time it's showing you you know how every number changes over time and here it gives you the actual regulation which is super nice and a little title tells you what's going on and then uh, at the bottom i have a legend that just tells you you know what all the different colors mean uh so you know you see that like oh regulation a blue that's for a giraffe then you have b red iron hands and so on and so forth uh, and then on the side th there's a lot of options basically for you know different colors and labels and how fast do you want the actual bar graphs to switch around? I'm not going to go over all of that. Um, I'm sure you can find the tutorial online, but but the basics, like this is what you can do with it. And you can basically change all of this. Like you can make sure that this label, if you don't want it, it never appears. If you want to keep track of totals or something, you can uh, add it to the bottom of this. You know, if you don't want this date to appear this big, you can change that. I, I just like it. So I really like the emphasis. Uh, so yeah, so let's go over how I actually gathered the data uh, because, you know, taking in a big CSV, plopping into this program is the easy part. The hard part is actually gathering the data. So uh, everything that I gather is from limitlessvgc.com uh, and pretty much all I'm doing is I'm just doing some very basic scraping. Um, I'm pretty much, th this is the actual code that gets that information for me. Uh, so I just get the HTTP content, and that's this function right here. It literally just gives me the content. It's simple as that. And then I've noticed that 
every time I want to take a look at some sort of uh, like unique team composition, uh, you can um, like it gives you like a link for the image for the sprite. So that's basically what I'm using to differentiate like all the different like Pokemon. I'm just looking at that PNG sprite uh, and it starts usually with a Gen 9. So I'm splitting it by that and I'm just going through it and I'm seeing if there's a PNG in it, that means, you know, the sprite image. Uh, and, you know, making sure I'm ignoring the very first thing. You don't need to worry about that. Um, but yeah, I'm basically gathering the actual name of the Pokemon. And then I have a little dictionary here where I'm storing information about it. And all I'm doing is I'm just keeping track for that tournament because um, if I show it off in a second, you get, you know, this little picture right here. And then whenever you click on a tournament, you get, you know, the name of the player, you get the country and you get the team. Now for the team, unfortunately, they don't give you like, you know, composition it uh, like you know like it doesn't give you the team code or uh what do you call it the showdown uh pokey paste by default sometimes it has it if you know the tournament actually provides you that data but for this one for instance they don't uh and whenever you click on these you know you can get like information on the individual pokemon but we don't care about that all i care about for this is just usage so Again, I'm, I'm going over, I'm grabbing all this information, and then I'm just looking at all these PNGs. Uh, I have a Pokemon name. And then I'm just keeping track of how many times do they appear. And um, I don't know if you've noticed, but this team for this tournament, it only gives you information about the top 128 players. There are 590 players at this tournament. So something to keep in mind, if you're gonna do this, uh, they only give you specific data for the players that actually placed. Uh, so if you want the entirety uh, like of the data for the whole tournament, you're not getting it here. Uh, I tried to look at some other places uh, and like I couldn't really get the best information. I feel like most places just keep track of the you know, top scoring players because why would you care about everyone else? I know that like the VGC Twitter account had like infographics about the top usage and I was like I don't want just the top 12 I want all the Pokemon so we go through everything we gather all the PNGs and we make sure we count every Pokemon and then I'm just looking at it um, at the end okay let's see what oh yeah I'm also gathering the date off the page as you saw that information is right there really easy to get it I don't want to type it in manually or whatever. I'm just going to get it right off the page. Uh, so that's what this code does. Uh, and then we're going to sort it because I want to, you know, be organized. You know, just, I want to see uh, which Pokemon are the most used very easily visually. Uh, so I just do that. And then I basically use pandas uh, to organize my data. I add a column for the URL. I add the date and I do a bunch of stuff uh, that doesn't really matter but then I just return that uh, all that information together so we're gonna go to the next step how it's being used so uh, basically my code all it's doing it's it's going over a list of attorneys that's gonna gather the tournament data for all of them and what these numbers mean it's if you went and looked at that site it's when you look at the URL you're gonna notice that every single tournament URL is gonna be practically the same except it's gonna have a unique number right here so it's gonna have 365 for the, re the Sacramento regional uh, and that's really important because this makes it really easy to go through a big list of tournaments like with no effort whatsoever basically because all I need to do is I need to go through the website try to figure out like let's say regulation a not six months and then boom i get my two tournaments i go on this one oh i see that's 296 i go on this one oh i see that's 297 cool let's look at my code regulation a 296 and 297 and I just keep doing this I, I could probably automate it uh but honestly there's not a lot of tournaments so i was fine with just gathering all these numbers manually uh but basically this is how i get all the information for all the tournaments and unfortunately this is only up to regulation g specifically uh worlds in honolulu uh because the 
it's just what I wanted to do. Cause, um, my problem was in Regulation H, they, uh, the Pokemon that have, uh, like they're, they're not adding new Pokemon. Regulation H just, just has less Pokemon. So I was thinking of doing this again, like a new visualization of whenever Gen 9 is over, just do H through whatever. I, I don't know, it's probably gonna go for another year or so. Uh, Gen 8 happened for like three years with the VGC uh, timeline. Gen 9 is probably gonna follow the same thing. So, you know, A through G just seemed like something that made sense to me. Um, so yeah, so you just go through all these tournaments and again, that just gives you the number. You go through it, you get that URL, you put in the number, uh, and then you just run through my code that I showed above. And you just throw it all together into a dictionary, and then you put in a data frame, and then at the end, you're gonna add it all to uh, CSV. So here is the CSV, uh, all the information that I've mentioned before is here, all the Pokemon, uh, there's all the links to all the images, the dates are the different uh, rows, and then the actual usage percentages are what's populated in there, you know, for each Pokemon at each individual date. Uh, something to keep in mind is uh, this is not the format that I'm feeding into uh, Flourish. Uh, I've taken this and then I basically just pivot around the data. So I flip it, so instead of uh, having the Pokemon being as different columns, my Pokemon are going to be different rows, and my dates are going to be the different columns. So this looks a lot, a lot more familiar, you know, if you paid attention to what I actually put into Flourish. Uh, and then I also added a regulation column, uh, where I manually had to put in, you know, A, B, C, D, you know, so on and so forth, because uh, I couldn't really get that or i mean i guess i could have added that to the code but i didn't feel like it whatever you know maybe if enough people care i'll add that in the future but this is what you get and at the end you literally can just take it all and copy it and then just drop it into flourish and lastly i just want to talk about the actual uh vgc like implications you know, what this data actually means so it's really interesting that literally the first two tournaments that happened you saw goldango at the top Reg B comes in, Flutter Main is number one, and it basically just stays number one for like <laughs> the rest of history up until, you know, Incineroar comes in. And you see all the, oh yeah, now we're on C, and you know, you're seeing all the, the treasures of ruin, I think they're called, uh, like they're coming to the top, you know, the really big dogs in the meta. Something else that's funny, it's like a Mungus always kind of stays towards the top just funny like you're seeing all these other pokemon just kind of coming in and out like constantly because obviously like every tournament is basically its own meta and you know and uh, maybe for the visualization it's not the best idea to show all that movement but uh, i just like that it really emphasizes uh that flutter main is at the top for like all of these the concept you know which to me says that it needs to be either banned or nerfed or something now it's not anymore you saw there's a, a couple changes that you went and it shifted oh yeah now that we're in reg e oh god we we didn't skip d because d happens so quickly we're in reg okay come on buddy okay we're in reg d and ushifu is coming and then you know you have Renatus and uh lando t of course they're at the top we have heatran and rillaboom uh, all really important players so it's really funny how you see there's a new regulation and typically this means that the you know, power levels are increasing, so whatever Pokemon have been introduced are going to be way more popular for that regulation. Uh, and in this case, it's like half of them. Really funny to me. Uh, and then, yeah, <laughs> it's like instantly drops down uh, for Blood of Me. And then Reg E, and you know, then we get the Ogre Ponds, and then it's just pandemonium. Like, it's just all around, and it's Ultra Foods back to Blood of Main, the F, which is so funny to me. And then we're going to G. Oh, yeah. And then there you go. There's Incineroar. And it just kind of stays at the top. And then this is the very last tournament, which again is Worlds. And you see that Ushif was at the top. So, yeah, really funny that a lot of the Reg G um, staples like Calyrex Ice and Calyx Shadow and like Maridon, they were not number one. Like the number one Pokemons are typically supporting Pokemon. 
that are like really really powerful like incineroar because you see them across so many teams or they're like specific pokemon that do you know like a niche like ushifu it's, it's niche is to break the goddamn game by uh you know hitting to protect and of course rillaboon's up the top because he needs to fight off maridon's electric terrain and uh, raging bolt's really powerful because you know priority spam and then of course furry giraffe's all the way at the top by the way furry giraffe only reg a pokemon that made it to the top 12 at worlds which is insane if you think about it. like just all this power creep that's been happening all this time and then you have just poor old for a giraffe so the only reason it's there is because it's kind of slow it's kind of bulky and oh i'm like that's not why it's there the reason it's there is because it can stop priority moves from you know happening so it's really funny just to see the contrast of just a raging bolt and for a giraffe right next to each other it's like you know you see how good raging bolt is and obviously everybody recognizes that and Everyone else is like, yeah, no, I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> Give me for your F. And of course, not just a hard counter for uh, Raging Bolt, just for, like I said, priority in general. And Incineroar kind of fell off for a while, I remember. Um, it'd be interesting to see this graph keeps moving uh, with the rest of the regulations and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm thinking I'll probably append to this visualization or maybe I'll keep it separate. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you want me. What do you want me to do with that? uh but yeah that's basically it that's all i got for you today uh if you like you know me talking about data and pokemon coding uh hit the subscribe button maybe leave a like and uh yeah hope you have a good day bye